Hey, welcome to the Total Bitcoin Podcast Show. My name is Kevan Davani, the Total Connector. You know, when uh, trying to combine or fuse, um, um, you know, h harder wallets um, and technical features, functions, privacy, security, um, with a you know with a user friendly um, user interface, user um, uh, user experience. It's it really not easy. So uh, um, really looking forward to my talk with Ben Kaufman again. Uh, he's been one of the you know main uh, developers of uh, the Spectre uh, desktop, um, which you know is sort of a interface. Uh, I'll call it an interface, a desktop interface, where you can you know connect your your hard wallets. You know first of all connect it to your full node. Uh, in my case, it would be, you know, when I open up my Mino dashboard, it's already uh, just recently integrated. So really kudos to them. Uh, so the Spectre is already integrated into the My Note as an icon, as a as a, as a button in in My Note. So yeah, without further ado, this is my talk with, with Ben Kaufman. He's also going to do a demonstration. So for those of you who are listening on podcast, if you want to like see the demonstration or see the function, especially the, uh, the ones who are noobs or not so technically experienced, um, and want to, you know, have sort of a guidance, a tutorial, uh, let's say a general tutorial with Ben Kaufman, check out my YouTube uh, and subscribe, please, on my YouTube channel, which is in the show notes. And um, it's uh, Kevin Davani, Total Connector, Total Bitcoin. Thanks so much for the support. Let me know if you have any questions afterwards. My email address is hello at the totalconnect.com. Make sure you follow me on Twitter, LinkedIn, Telegram. And thank you so much. Welcome to the show, Ben Kaufman. Thanks so much for your time. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, thanks for having me again. Ben, uh, congratulations again to your great work. I know it's still, you know, in progress, everything, and and uh, there's still a lot of things to do. But but in essence, uh, it's ready. It's also in, been integrated at Spectre Desktop. Uh, uh, or the Spectre, as I would call it, into my node, which which uh, uh, which makes me really happy because I'm a my node user. Um, so Ben, why don't you tell a little bit the background story about you know how you came to 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 be working on on Spectre? You know, I guess you're one of the main developers, as I've as I've understood correctly. And what was the reason, the the, the purpose behind this uh, whole Spectre desktop? What, what, what were you trying to achieve here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So I think Spectre, um, Spectre Desktop as a project was started, I think, around um, mid-2019 uh, uh, by Stepan from, uh, from Crypto Advance, uh, along with, uh, I think, uh, uh, along with Moritz. Um, so, but I think Stepan uh, did all the, all the coding, all the initial uh, code. Um, I joined around, um, I think, a few months ago, around March, I think. Um, so I just saw, saw the project on Twitter. I met Moritz uh, in a few conferences before, uh, but uh, I think, no, I haven't met Stepan before that, just Moritz. Uh, but I saw the project. Uh, I was looking around that time for some, you know, for some uh, multi-sig hardware wallet. Uh, I heard a little bit about Caravan, but didn't really give uh, give it a try. Um, but yeah, I just saw Spectre and decided to to give that a shot. Uh, I really just really really like that. Just so that it's really easy to use, really useful for me. And you know, just started um, doing some small things. You know, some very minor features or bug fixes that I thought that I need personally. So stuff that I found useful for myself, um, and from there I just, you know, I just got into that and just stuck into it. So just started doing uh, bigger and bigger stuff, bigger changes, bigger features. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, for the, you know, for those listeners, um, you know, as you know, my, my purpose is to break this uh, this knowledge down for for noobs or or average users. What is it? Um, what is it that the Spectre does? Which uh, is it comparable to Electrum? Is it comparable from you know usability or functionality features? 
what can you do with Spectre? Can you, uh, you know, just do a, like an overview? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So Spectre is basically a wallet management software. So it allows you to, it's kind of a GUI for um, an interface for Bitcoin Core. So it allows you to use hardware wallets, um, soon also a hot wallet we're adding. Um, with uh, you know multi sigs, single sigs with your Bitcoin Core node. So instead of depending on whatever uh, software Trezor supplies or Ledger supplies, uh, which is not very privacy preserving and quite limited in terms of integration with other uh, wallets like multi sigs, so you can use Spectre in order to to do that. Um, it works with uh, with hardware wallet integration for most. Uh, which is uh, a tool by Andrew Cho uh, to use most hardware wallets. Um, so we use that to, to communicate with them, um, which allows us to, to utilize most of their features. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a, a wallet management software in, in its like um, in the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. I already saw um, a, a short tweet or a post by, by Stepan Snigarev, um, I mean, I, I'm going to claim that he's one of the really best uh, security experts or uh, technologists out there. And he did uh, set up a multisig, as I, or, or at least a Cobo, uh, or with a Cobo a Spectre with a Cobo Vault. Mm -hmm. um, now, 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 you can do essentially every, you can connect Spectre to every, to every, uh, you know, well-known um, uh, hardware wallet out there, um, uh, including Cobo Vault. Um, so yes, right now we support uh, basically all the, the popular wallets, including Kobo uh, from the last version now. Um, and adding wallets is, is pretty easy for us. It's not so so complicated, so uh, not much work if, if there is a new popular wallet with uh, a lot of demand and people want to use it, so adding that to is, is not really a, pro a problem. Um, but yeah, we already support uh, Trezor, Callcard, Ledger, KeepKey, now Kobo, um, and Spectre uh, Do-It-Yourself, which is uh, a Do-It-Yourself hardware wallet. How about Bitbox? Um, uh, Bitbox too? Uh, by by um, uh, no, so, uh, I, don't think, I don't think we have support for that, but I okay. think it can be very easy because I think they are supported by a uh, hardware wallet integration uh, tool. So we, I can ch actually check that. I, I just didn't look into it yet. Okay. As we go along and, you know, as you're going to go uh, into details and explain stuff, I'm going to, you know, ask a bunch of really naive and stupid questions. I need to ask those questions. Otherwise, um, it's just going to be reserved for the, uh, you know, for the more experienced or advanced uh, Bitcoiners or, or even, you know, uh, technically experienced people. So, uh, yeah, why don't you go ahead and uh, because I open up my, my, my note, you know, it really looks uh, slick. It really looks sexy. I opened it up. It... Uh, uh, the only thing I managed, you know, is to connect uh, the the Cobo Vault. You know, it's air gapped with a QR code. That's all um, I did. I didn't, you know, go into any deeper details or you know, or try to. Um, so why don't you why don't you just go into you know into the into the real stuff and just explain? Maybe do a little demonstration. Uh, yeah, sure. The stage is yours with, with screen sharing. Yeah, sure. Let me turn on the screen sharing. Okay, you see my screen, right? Yeah, beautiful. So that's uh, I just open up uh, Spectre uh, completely empty on on a reg test, I, which is just a, a simulated chain running on on my computer, where we can play with it. Um, so let's let's start. I connected a, a keep key and a Spectre do it yourself to to my computer. Um, so let's start by just adding a device. Uh, that's the first thing you you should do with the with Spectre. Um, so let's start with Keep Me. I'll just name it. I'm choosing the, the type Keep Key. Get over USB. So what it is it is doing right now? We're just connecting to to the Keep Key, communicating with it over USB. Uh, enter passphrase is is optional if you enable passphrases in your in your device extra security so we support uh, using that as well i uh, just submit it empty, empty for now let me just enter the pin so 
works. So this is just a test device. So I don't have under uh, mind, uh, you know, this is not uh, an OPSEC issue for me. So we just, yeah, keep keys a bit slow with, with the pin, but mm -hmm. in a moment it should open. Uh, ben, can I ask you right now before we move any forward, can you explain a little bit what is Bitcoin Core? I mean, when I open it up uh, through my, my node, is it already automatically connected to my full node, my node? Is, mm -hmm. is that yeah. by default connected, right? Yes. So with Bitcoin Core, uh, it, just, uh, it uses it basically as kind of a, a backend just for, you know, for communicating with the blockchain, for creating... Um, uh, for creating transactions, uh, PSBTs more correctly, um, but it connects to it automatically if you have uh, if you're using it through my node or through Raspberry Blitz, which are both supporting Spectre. And if you are using, um, for example, um, Bitcoin Core, which is which runs locally on the computer, uh, it, if it's with with the default configuration. Um, with the default path, at least of, of the um, uh, of the folder, the Bitcoin folder, so it will detect that automatically too. Uh, if not, I will show in a moment uh, where you can configure it. It's very simple. Um, but yeah, let's just finish with the keep key. Sure. Mm -hmm. So what it uh, done here? It just automatically imported all the um, XPubs uh, that it will need, all the uh, public keys, basically, that uh, Spectre will need to create new addresses and use uh, and uh, create new uh, multisigs or uh, regular wallets with, with that device. So all, the, all that Spectre does, it saves the, uh, the public keys. It doesn't touch the, the private keys of, of the device or, any, or anything. Uh, so all signing happens in the device and the worst thing that can happen when you're using Spectre is if someone touches your computer, you can see your public keys, but never, never let it private, so friends are safe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so let's click continue to add the device. And as you can see, you can see public device of key. key. Uh, this is just the list with, uh, I guess most uh, non-technical users don't really need to worry about this list. Um, so it just says here the, the type of the key, its derivation, uh, which is the, the BIP32 der derivation path of the key. Again, uh, for noobs, I don't think they, they need to worry about it, but this just means how, how the key was created, mm -hmm. basically from, from a, single, um, a single secret. So uh, with combining that secret uh, and that specific path, you, can, you could create that, uh, that key. Um, but yeah, this this is just like Spectre now can use for creating wallets. Um, so let's see how we can connect Spectre to Bitcoin Core without the, the default configuration. So just a moment. Mm -hmm. So here there, there's the settings right here in the Bitcoin Core. Sorry. Yeah. So there's the settings if you click on Bitcoin Core. Um, there's the Bitcoin Core settings, and you can set your username and password, which is the JSON RPC username and password. So when you set up Bitcoin Core, you usually set username and password for your uh, for your node for communicating with your node for authentication. Uh, again, Spectre can detect that automatically usually, but if it doesn't detect it for some reason, uh, you can set it over here. Uh, so, for me, so for me, it's empty because Spectre detected that automatically. Um, the host is just where, where it, uh, the node lives. So if it's on your local machine, you can just uh, it, it will just be localhost. Uh, and the port is uh, the it, it's just a port where Bitcoin Core is running. So there are default ports. Uh, we are right now using Gregtest, which default port is uh, 18443. So this is where it's set right now. And if you want to, to just test the connection to make sure that everything works and that Bitcoin Core is connected properly, just to, to make sure about that, you can click on test. And it will run here some, some tests for connecting to the node and checking everything is, is fine. So you can see that it could connect to it. The credentials were okay. Version of, of Bitcoin Core is recent enough and that uh, the wallet settings of Bitcoin is enabled. 
Uh, this is just uh, some some test data which we will need uh, in order to debug the stuff if something goes wrong. Okay, uh, Ben, the page looks very familiar to me. I think it it looks it looks exactly pretty much identical. Um, so you mean when I open it up through my my note dashboard, um, does it uh, because there's no username password in it, so it it must have uh, recognized it automatically by default, right? Um, mm -hmm. Because I'm yeah, on the local network, right? By default, at least, yes. Okay, but what if I well, what if I want to enter like like I want to access it from outside, you know, like I usually, uh, um, you know, access it via tour or something? Um, would that be a different setting or is it really? Yeah. Like so simple? for for the Bitcoin Core, so if you want to, do you mean access Bitcoin Core through through tour or Spectre through tour? Spectre, Spectre. Yes, so the Bitcoin Core configuration can remain the same. Uh, I don't see any benefits of having it connect through Tor to, to the Bitcoin Core if it sits on the same machine at least. Uh, but yeah, if we want to connect to Spectre through Tor, it's quite simple. We have uh, one, uh, one of the files in the repository. I can show that later. I just um, You just run it with, uh, run through a simple process of generating um, a secret but uh, and just run it run spectre with with that secret but it should be fairly easy uh we have it all documented and i need to check if there needs to be some special documentation for my node for that but i think it should work the same all right okay i just want to you know uh tell also my listeners because it's um this is actually a podcast but since you're demonstrating something um i will upload this also on youtube on my youtube channel the total bitcoin total connector show so uh, anybody who wants to you know see the details i mean you're explaining really beautifully uh, also the the things that maybe you know the average bitcoiner would take for granted uh, would be great also you know to always explain things or the terminology so people know where you know where they're standing and you know so they don't get lost thanks so much mm -hmm. Ben. yeah sure so i think let's go ahead and create a wallet mm -hmm. we can start since we have only one device we can only create a single stick so that's what we're going to create right now what's uh, the so difference let's... between nested segwit and segwit because it says your type oh, of the yeah, wallet sure. sure yeah so uh the segwit is the the addresses starting with BC1. Mm -hmm. So this is just the, the new address format since we have SegWit, there was a new address format, which is uh, BAC32 encoded. This is just, uh, it means that the addresses look different, uh, basically. This is one thing. Uh, the other thing is that the nested SegWit is, looks like the old addresses, so it's compatible with old wallets. Uh, it starts with, with the free, like, uh, like the script, uh, like the pay to script hash, mm -hmm. uh, but it 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 also uses SegWit. It just for compatibility with wallets which don't really support it SegWit. Um, but bo both are basically SegWit. One is just hidden behind uh, the old format, uh, just for compatibility. Okay. Gotcha. So if if you are not planning to to use like some old wallet or something, you should you you should uh, use SegWit. I don't see a lot of reasons to, to select nested SegWit unless you very specifically need it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to, to take. So let's name it, for example, keep key um, single wallet. Should say keep key device, continue. Here you just, uh, again, if you have multiple uh, pub keys which, which match the derivation needed for, for the, the new wallet type, you will be able to select between them. But again, most users will not have uh, to, to do that. Most users have only one key for the derivation, which is what we get by default because that's what we need. So it automatically just chooses the, the first key. Uh, again, here we have also the option to scan for existing funds. So just if uh, if you're importing an existing wallet, let's say you use your Trezor on the all, on the regular like Trezor um, software, so on the regular Trezor website, and want to migrate to Spectre, uh, you just uh, tick that um, checkbox here, 
and the uh, specter will automatically scan for all the funds and import the, the addresses that you used uh, so far. Uh, but it might take some time, so if it might take uh, a few hours if it's a very big wallet or something. Uh, yeah, but we create a new wallet, so we don't need that. Let's just create it. Okay, so now we have a new wallet here. Um, it prompts us to the address page, uh, to the receive page where we see our first address. Uh, any questions so far? Uh, no, but how did you get inside that wallet now? I mean, uh, to the to yeah, this to the display. When I create the wallet, okay. When I click create wallet, it takes me here. All right. All right. Uh, but you can always navigate to it through the sidebar. Yeah, just for my listeners to know. Yeah, yeah sure. So I, when you create a wallet, it will take you to it, but you can always navigate through wallets and devices through the sidebar. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, here we have. Uh, the a QR code and the address itself. Uh, we can generate a new address if we want. Uh, whenever we have received funds, the addresses are generated automatically to avoid address reuse, which damages privacy, so not good. So we avoid that automatically. Um, also, two things you can do here is display the address on device just to you know to verify that the device actually controls the uh, the keys to the address. Mm -hmm. So one thing which is, ver this is very important uh, to protect the, the users from some, um, if, if their um, computers are compromised. So if the computer is compromised, you might have a software which messes with, with what you see on the screen. Uh, so this is why we use hardware wallets in the first place to avoid uh, the, the pitfalls uh, from using a computer which is connected to the internet and might have malware on it and might be compromised. So with, uh, when you display the address on the device, you can uh, see it on your uh, device screen. And just, yeah, uh, and just uh, when you see that on the device screen, you can make, you can uh, be assured that the, the address is, is indeed yours, that mm -hmm. it's not uh, planted mm -hmm. by some hacker. Mm -hmm. And you can actually do that with every uh, hardware wallet you have, like with it be Trezor, yes. uh, Copa Vault, yeah, or you can yeah. do this with every major wallet. So I, I didn't test Copa myself, so I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. I think so. With Spectre, I know you can do that with uh, Trezor, uh, Ledger, Keep Key, and um, and a Cold Card too. And you can do this also, like we just added the ability to do this for multi-sigs as well, uh, for all wallets except uh, Ledger, which doesn't support a multi-sig display address, which is a security vulnerability uh, reported to them quite long ago, but for some reason they ignored it. So for everything else, we, we do support displaying on the device and I encourage uh, users to, to use that uh, when, when they receive funds. Um, so let's, I think we can, we can continue to actually get some funds. Uh, since it's a break test, I can just generate to myself here. Uh, let's also just edit the label here, for example, to know what, what the money is. So let's say, Mine. This is just take advantage of the um, of the mining uh, of sorry of the labeling of Bitcoin Core. So mm -hmm. there's automatic labeling of, of Bitcoin Core. Go to bit. Just a second. I'll generate to the address. I don't think you can see that right. You don't see my terminal here, or you do? Yep. Yo, what? Do you see my terminal here or not? Uh, what is the terminal? What is it? Okay, okay, you see Spectre yet, so it doesn't share that, but it shares the Spectre screen. Okay, so now I generated some some coins, some money in, in here, mm -hmm. so you can see the balance updated. Uh, there is a new mining reward, you see. Mm -hmm. In the addresses page, you can see all your past addresses. Uh, you can group them by labels uh, if you want to create some accounts or so. You can see only the active UTXO, so all your UTXO list, which is just the same here for us for now. Mm -hmm. uh, here you can see that the new address was generated. And now let's let's send some funds. But before that, let's create another wallet, uh, a multisig, and send that to it. 
shall we? Mm -hmm. Let's create with a uh, Spectre now, which is the other device I have here. Spectre. Get over USB. So it just connects to, to the Spectre uh, device that I have here. And continue. Yep. Okay, so we have no Spectre here as another device. And let's create a multisig. Um, creating a multisig is almost the same. Let's call it um, Kitty Spectre multisig. And here, let's just, we can say how many devices out of how many. So uh, one out of two, let's do it. Uh, you can just uh, choose whatever you want here. Uh, let's select the devices we want to use, so both and create a wallet. Okay, cool. So let's just copy the address here and say uh, we want to, to move to a multi-sig because it's more secure. So a uh, single sig migration. Just don't know what it is. So now here in the sending page, you can see that we have a few things. So the recipient address will be just the address here. Uh, address label, so we know who we send it to. So the multi-sig, new multi-sig. Um, the amount you can set it to such or Bitcoin. Let's say we want to move one Bitcoin there. Um, the fees, let's set it to manual because if it's Bitcoin Core, it will automatically calculate the fees based on, on Bitcoin Core if it's uh, a testnet or no mainnet, but on reg test, uh, it can't really calculate automatically the fees. So we will set that manually to one uh, Satoshi per byte. And create unsigned transaction it just creates for us uh, the transaction to, to send. So here you can see that we have the, our transaction to the new multisig. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we want, this is a bit more technical, but here you can see all the transaction details. So from uh, transaction ID and fees, the input details. So basically everything that you you may want to, to know about your transaction, we just displayed here, but the simple view is it just what, how much you send and to whom. And let's, let's sign it. So here we have the, the list of the, the devices that we can sign with, which is only keep key with, with a single SIG. Uh, we can choose a, a signing method. So for Spectre, for example, which supports both QR codes and uh, hardware wallet integration, it will offer us both, but keep key supports only the hardware wallet integration. So we just chose that. Let's sign with it. Just a second, I need to enter my pin again. Mm -hmm. So you can do pretty much everything that you know that you can do on Electrum, but maybe even with yes. a better with a better UX, or maybe even with a better smooth interface. Uh, uh, let's talk about that later on. You know, because that's yeah, sure. It's so important we'll aspect. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just clicking to sign on the transaction on the device itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it got it right now. So the transaction is ready to broadcast. We can either send it uh, if it's not a reg test, which is again a lo local on my computer. So if it's not a reg test, we could also send it through blockstream.info, uh, which should just uh, which which is a feature we added just to you know um, for privacy. So if you send it from your computer, it might uh, if you're tracked, uh, companies or whoever tracks you might know, might be able to know that you sent that transaction, that your IP sent that transaction. Mm -hmm. But if we send it first to Blockstream and then Blockstream propagates it, so it's harder for them, it should be harder for them to know. Um, so we can either send it or save it as a pending transaction if, if we don't want to send it yet, but let's, let's send it. Mm -hmm. So here you can see it is an unconfirmed transaction. It is still pending. But we can also see right here the transaction that one DTC was added here. 
to our multi sig. Okay. Um, yeah. And questions so far? Um, no. Um, so uh, let me before uh, that that is important. I think to to ask. Um, now everything is open source. You guys, is that everything open source you work with? Yes. Or? Yeah. This okay. Is everything is one one hundred percent open source. Uh, I'm just imagining, you know, what other people would, or other uh, experts would ask. I mean, is that something that has been audited, or you know, exact, or you know? Uh, well, I don't think that the I I'm not aware that the code has been audited by anyone mm -hmm. other than the developers themselves. Mm -hmm. Just us. But I don't. Uh, first of all, there is. No no original because we only use uh, you know just the cold storage so we don't store we don't touch the keys at all at mm -hmm. any time so you can't uh, a theft of funds cannot happen with that uh, if you validate everything on your um, on your hardware wallet screen itself I am um, but that so it's the only thing that the worst thing that can happen is privacy issues so if someone takes away your your uh, x pubs but for that you will need you know you'll need to to get into your computer somehow i see um yeah so there's not much to to not much security risk that that i can see here i think mm -hmm. um but yeah What's been the feedback so far? By the way, I mean, uh, should we? I think we should uh, give out a shout out. I think to also to Crypto Kids uh, who wrote some kind of on GitHub some kind of do it yourself uh, Spectre uh, version. Do you... Oh yeah. So, so no. So keep. keep uh, so uh, sorry. So Crypto Kids <laughs> um, wrote the for Spectre Desktop. He wrote the um, the frequently asked uh, questions page. Mm -hmm. Um, and they also shared, um, I think, a thread on Twitter on how to, to create the, on how it created a Spectre do-it-yourself, which is the, uh, the hardware wallet, mm -hmm. the, the do-it-yourself hardware wallet that, that, uh, that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, also shout out, I guess, also Stepan I mentioned, and Moritz, and also Kim, which is also uh, one of the developers, um, even before me. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, and kids also we yeah. are. Mm -hmm. What was the feedback from Stepan Snigarev um, so far? I mean, what did he test, and how, how did he test? Or, or, or and 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 also my second question is, where do you see the challenges for you know for you're not the noob, but like let's say someone who's already you know a little bit experienced, but uh, like myself a little bit, but where do you see the challenges or um, or, or, put, or potential for improvements? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think right. I mean, right now there is a ton of stuff that we could do that we think of doing that and that we're working on. Mm -hmm. So just uh, one thing I mentioned was the the hot wallet, which I'm currently working on. Also, something which I think is more very, very important, which I think Stefan is working on right now, uh, is packaging the app uh, to make it easier to, to set up and then install. So right now, you if you don't use it through MyNode uh, or Raspberry Blitz, which simplifies stuff, you need to, to run it with, with Python. So it, it shouldn't be that bad, but for many people, it's sometimes a pain. Uh, so I, I hope we, we can improve on that a lot in the near future. Um, besides that, uh, other stuff that we're working on uh, right now, we're also in, uh, finished implementing uh, a multi-user feature for, for Spectre, and soon we will probably deploy it on you know on a public server so people can play with it before they uh, install it for themselves. Uh, kind of just test it and play around with it or I uh, share it with, with friends and family so who don't run their own full node but maybe are interested in, in Bitcoin or something. Um, the, the pitfalls I get I guess is uh, I think besides the installation and everything setting that up maybe the, the UI could be improved to, to be uh, easier for, for, uh, for beginners or so. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure there are many, many things that we think about implementing into, into Spectre. 
Did you work with a UX designer? I mean, who, who do you work with when it comes uh, to no, designing? So, uh, yeah, so Stepan is, uh, has done the designing so far. Mm -hmm. I think, he, like personally, I think he done a great job. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm definitely not a designer and I couldn't design anything near that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm just terrible at it. Um, I stick to coding. But yes, yeah, Stepan has, has done all the design, all the icons, all the, the color schemes, basically everything related to the design as far as I know. Um, but yeah, I think I think we call it, uh, I think this is very good what we have now, but maybe we but I think we could use feedback from from beginners to see what what is the what is the pains for for them. You know, uh, maybe someone with less technical background and see if, if he thinks that it's good enough for him, if there's things that he would like to, to be simplified, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely myself a good measuring stick for that because, you know, I'm not advanced. I'm not, you know, super like experienced, but, um, you know, but I do have experience, you know, with uh, whatever setting up hardware wallets or working with Electrum or setting up a multi-sig. So that would be so great, you know, if you have like a, like, like a user interface like that, you know, in Spectre and you have like everything uh, like like you know a smooth uh, overview like you know you got your your single wallets you got your multi six and um yeah that would be great so um what was I gonna ask you? yeah it, so that's a desktop uh, there's uh, is there is there uh, like a mobile version on the roadmap or or mm, are you going yeah so right now that about regarding mobile so we are trying to to make this also mobile friendly so this is uh, pretty much a huge pain to, to do that. So we currently have some minimal um, uh, support for um, for mobile. So if I, for example, just uh, just minimize that, you could see that the uh, sidebar is getting smaller and everything, but it doesn't yet look great. So I think on iPad you could use it, but not really a mobile phone. Uh, I hope we will get to that in the future, but this, this is going to be quite hard to to see how to you know how to design it for that. Yeah, I think he, we will we might need some help from a more experienced designer for for the mobile. But I think so far it's um, at least for iPad, which I tried it on, it feels quite nice. Yeah, I mean, there's a really uh, excellent. I'm going to have a talk on uh, this Sunday with with Celine of Blockstream and Mayank, uh, really excellent. UX designers, and we're going to, going to go down the rabbit hole of you know what are the challenges, what what do the users uh, really need, how you know how can we serve the users better, or actually the UX designers, how can they c collaborate, cooperate, communicate better with uh, with the product developers and the programmers, and you know and uh, um, so if I wanted like like. Um, if 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 there you know if you guys develop this mobile version, would that be possible then to connect it via Tor? Yeah, it's always uh, uh, possible to connect it uh, via Tor. So as I said, we have the the Tor setup, which is not, it, uh, I I don't think it's complicated personally. I've done it like when I just uh, started looking at Spectre. It was. I am a technical guy, so it's hard for me to, to be objective on that, but they set it up in a few minutes. So it was really easy in just following that guide. Um, but yeah, so you can just run it on, on Tor right now and access it through whatever other device that you want. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think with, with the mobile, uh, if we get to a mobile, we might need to, to also think on how to do that easier to, to connect to it, but I think it's quite good right now. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, there were a couple of other questions I wanted to ask you, but I think it would, that's good for now. Is there anything like you want to add, uh, be, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to keep uh, make this too long uh, of an episode because it's pretty heavy technical and and especially for the listeners. But is there anything you want to add or or explain to uh, especially the the new users, noobs, who really want to really start playing uh, with with the hardware wallets or setting a multi-sig in, con in connection with with Spectre desktop? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, sure. So I just think that uh, maybe highlighting the, the advantage of using uh, Spectre, for example, um, compared to the you know to the Ledger Live or Trezor website or anything. I think one of the, the first thing to mention is uh, the privacy preserving aspect, mm -hmm. where in Spectre you, you hold your keys for yourself, you, you watch your addresses for yourself, uh, while on Trezor and, and Ledger Live, for example, they, you, know, you, you send to them the, the public keys. Uh, which then they ca they could uh, in theory use to to track your funds, uh, which is uh, a pri a privacy concern. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing is that with with Spectre it's easier to it, um, to actually use your own node, so you can't really connect your own node with uh, with Ledger or uh, or Trezor with without uh, without some special software. Uh, so with their default software, do you you have to trust their uh, um, their nodes? You have to trust them to to validate your coins, which puts you in some security risk in case they they try uh, they try to cheat on you or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and they also think this is like the very plus of Bitcoin of verifying your own transactions. I think this is very important for Bitcoin and the the main reason for me to to actually use you know, to use my own node, uh, verify my own transactions. So this is our, these are the, the two highlights, I think, of why you use, why you use Spectre, why you use your own node. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, what, what kind of uh, hardware wallet when it comes to security? Do you have a preference for the hardware wallet? And this is something you want yeah, to talk about? Yeah, so I think, I am I'm, I'm not sure so I I just I have most of them uh, right now and I don't have a strong preference I think like I like cold card a lot I I think also Trezor is pretty nice the, the model T um but I don't have a strong preference and I think that in terms of of you know of security I think it's good to to have a multi sig with with multiple types of devices as well uh, not you know so if one of them for some reason there's a critical vulnerability you could uh, you know you, your funds are, are still uh, safe um this is this is another consideration why I use the multi sig so a multi sig on electrum is is always a good choice are you, are you saying um for i think example? multi sig are usually a good choice uh mm -hmm. first it might it might also make sense to to use a single sig in, in a lot of cases. I don't say that it is the best uh, choice for everybody to use multi sigs, but they have the they have um, sec uh, security uh, advantages. Right. Uh, do you want to talk about a caravan? Have you tested it uh, of Unchained Capital? Um... Yeah, personally, I played with it very little, so I can't say much. But I think Car Caravan is uh, aiming to do uh, more just just uh, coordination between multiple entities. Um, so they they are stateless as far as I know. So they don't manage your your devices and your wallets like with Spectre. They just uh, meant for it just meant for coordination as far as I know. Um, they use a different uh, different te technology stack which had an advantage, for example, in the last, uh, if you remember the last uh, security issue with, with hardware wallets, yeah. where, the, you know, with the, the SegWit uh, format, transaction format issue. Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So the, they, they use the, the, um, the, for example, they use Trezor Connect, I think, to, to connect your Trezor devices, which meant that the, the fix that Trezor made uh, was available right away. I'm not sure how good it or bad it is for for privacy. I'm not sure if the Trezor Connect also uh, sends your your uh, pub keys or not. So I have no idea on that. Mm -hmm. But I think it's good to have like multiple options and multiple stacks. Uh, but I think their aim is quite different. Um, so yeah, with Spectre you can also do coordination, and uh, in the stand here you can. Have multiple users in Spectre. You can sign, uh, save the transact, sign on one computer, for example, um, 
save the transaction into the unsigned screen and then sign it from another computer. You could import that transaction uh, from from another user, but yeah, it's, the the interface is more is stateful, so it saves uh, the the wallets and the devices that you're using. Uh, that's I think it's they have very uh, similar uses, but essentially it's different, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, just just for the sake of definition, what is a PSBT like a, a partially signed oh, Bitcoin yeah. transaction? Yeah, because that's what yeah, sure. Spectre so supports, too, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So Spectre works with what is called PSBT, a partially signed Bitcoin transaction. So a PSBT is just uh, a fancy name for a Bitcoin transaction which was created but wasn't signed yet. So you are creating um, a Bitcoin. When you create, you can create a Bitcoin transaction. Uh, we we use your own full node to create a Bitcoin transaction, but the signing happens somewhere else. So you uh, you just have the, the transaction created on your computer, uh, but then you sign it on the secure hardware that uh, wallet that you're using. I, this just means that you can use, uh, you can uh, sign, separate signing from creating the transaction. Um, yeah, but it, it just, I think it, it's more of a fancy name for something not so complicated. Mm -hmm. Something, um, it's, it's a simple question, but, but it's really important. So someone who, who just uses really a, just a simple hardware wallet, like a Trezor, um, you know, and and just opens up, you know, the the web browser, and you know, does does his transaction, whatever. And the difference to using, let's say, a Trezor as a single wallet on Spectre, uh, what is the difference in privacy again? I mean, uh, or can you enhance the privacy features when you when you're interacting, when you're you know connecting it, or or you know um, working with with Spectre as a, just a single wallet? Is there any difference? Yes. Yeah, so the, the advantages are pretty much the same. You don't need to, uh, you, the pub keys are not sent to, to Trezor. Mm -hmm. uh, they are kept uh, on, the, on your computer. They don't leave your computer. And again, you verify your own transactions. You can make sure, you know, that uh, if, in case we have another saga like the, the Segwit Wars where some, you know, some uh, companies said that they are going to accept uh, the Segwit 2x Bitcoin as the real Bitcoin. <laughs> so something like that will not affect you uh, in, in, in any way. So you will, even if, uh, just for the sake of, you know, of, the, of this example, if Tre Trezor would, uh, would have gone with, with Bitcoin Cash with the uh, Segwit 2x, whatever, then you would still use Bitcoin as, as, as usual. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So um, the company behind Spectre is um, it's Crypto Advance. You want to, I don't know, mention mm -hmm. a little bit or direct people to your Twitter handle or uh, Twitter handle of Crypto Advance and other resources? Yeah, sure. So I'm I, like, at least right now, personally, I'm not working uh, for them in any way. I'm just cooperating mm -hmm. with them on this product, which is open source. Uh, so this is just how I came to to. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a great company uh, of Stepan and uh, Moritz uh, as far as I know. I can't pronounce their their you know their last names too well, so just Stepan and Moritz, and you can see them on Twitter, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think they are. Uh, I think the it's a very promising company. I think it's really a really interesting uh, work that they're doing. Um, yeah, that's that's my Twitter handle on on the screen. Mm -hmm. And so that's crypto advance. Yeah, so if yeah. there are any questions, any need for help, then you can. Uh, there's a Telegram group for for Spectre for support, uh, where you can send questions. Um, my DMs are also open, so if you want to ask me, you can do that too. Uh, you can open an issue on GitHub if that fits. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, what I hear, Ben, is uh, a lot of people seem to be really, uh, um, for good reasons, you know, really excited that uh, Spectre is finally, you know, thanks to your, you know, great work also, uh, especially to your work, um, really brought out, uh, it's really, more or less, it's also your baby, you know, so, uh, and uh, also Moritz and other people, um, 
yeah so shout out to all of them and uh yeah any final thoughts or um then we can wrap it up yeah, thank I'm you so sure. much again yeah, ben, yeah, for your time. yeah sure so we just yeah i think uh, i also got uh tied to the project a lot since they started uh, contributing there but i think it's still mostly stepan's work i think he deserves uh, most of the credit there uh, done a great job doing a great job uh also kim again um so yeah but i think the, the entire team is, is really great and again if you have any questions there is the, the support group and my dms all right great thank you so much ben and yeah hope to talk to you soon again on a panel discussion together with stephanie von jan we should we should you know uh, uh repeat those sessions again as panel discussion on austin economics i mean i think a lot of people still don't know you uh, or actually uh, as my listeners know that you've written you know beautiful um, uh, and presented also in vienna uh, you know wonderful articles and made beautiful presentations on austin economics the boom and bust cycles uh is there anything on the horizon you're you're, you're going to publish or are you working on in regards to yeah, austin not economics? Yet, just, yeah not yet just the time constraints so not much time to to also code and my job and you know everything together so tried to to find a balance between all so not yet but i hope in in the near future to to have some time for that too Okay. Well, Ben, thank you so much and take care. All right. Yeah. All right. Thank you for Bye -bye. having me. Okay. That was a hell of a, yeah, a fascinating tutorial actually. Um, so again, for my podcast listeners, um, if you want to really dive into the more, you know, detailed instructions, tutorial, or, or you know, demonstration, you should also check out uh, the video on YouTube. I'm going to upload this on podcast and YouTube. Uh, I was thinking, you know, going back and forth with a, you know, I should only do this as a, as a, as a, you know, as a, on my, as a video on my YouTube channel. Again, thank you so much for, for, for your support and please uh, follow Ben uh, Kaufman on Twitter um, and um, follow me on Twitter also my Twitter handle is Kevin Davani make sure you you follow me you subscribe on my YouTube channel my podcast platforms leave me a positive review share it like it retweet it reshare it whatever you do thank you so much again and uh, if you have any questions let me know my email address is hello at the total and my website is kbondavani.com or thetotalconnector.com. Thanks so much. Bye.